Hello and welcome back. I hope you have uh, liked my first two video on theory of demand. Uh, this is my third video where I'll try to explain you the chapter elasticity of demand. In this uh, video, we are going to see uh, different types of elasticity, its degree and some examples. So let us begin with the chapter. In the first slide, you can see here in the first slide, uh, the meaning of elasticity of demand is explained and the credit for introducing the concept of elasticity of demand goes to Alfred Marcel. Before we go to understand what is the concept of elasticity, let us quickly go into the history of uh, uh, elasticity of demand and uh, let us understand that why the concept of elasticity of demand was necessary to introduce. Uh, if you look here, the first point, then you're going to find that according to the law of demand, what we have studied in the uh, first chapter that is theory of demand we have seen that law of demand tell us that when price changes quantity demand also ch changes to be particular according to the law of demand which was uh, again given by mr alfred marshall it is told that when price of the commodity increases the demand fall and when price of the commodity fall demand uh, rises up so there is a inverse relation between price and uh, demand but the point is the law of demand does not tell us exactly that what will be the change in the quantity demanded if the price change by one unit or say two units. So that is what uh, one of the criticism that we can we can say uh, against the law of demand. So this is uh, where there was a need for introducing a concept that is exactly going to tell us that what will be the change or how much will be the change in the quantity demand when the price of the commodity changes and it is where the concept of elasticity of demand uh, come up okay you can see here the definition the second point if you look uh, look on the slide then you are going to find the definition of elasticity is given so let us first understand the meaning of the word elasticity and then we'll move on to the concept where i will explain you what is price elasticity income elasticity advertisement elasticity and there are many uh, other types of elasticities are there so let us first understand this see this point tell us that elasticity of demand refers to the degree of responsiveness of quantity demand of a commodity due to a change in any of its determinant. In other words, it is the change in quantity demand due to change in any of its determinant. Right. So let us uh, first understand the mi meaning of the word elasticity. Elasticity in economics is it means degree of responsiveness this that means how the consumers are going to behave when there is a change in any of the determinant of demand so let us take uh, price as one of the determinant and uh, let us have a discussion on this first price and then i'll go for other determinant i hope you remember uh, i'll show you the second slide let us first see the second slide then you will remember that uh, what actually i am talking about in the first two video we have talked about demand function where i have told that demand function is nothing but it is a function that shows the relation between quantity demand and the deter and its determinant like price was one of the determinant uh, income was the another determinant price of the related good price of the complementary good test and preference habit of the consumer so like this there are many determinants or many factors that affect the quantity demand and uh, what we are interested here in this chapter we are interested to know that if any of this determinant changes uh, other determinant remaining the same then how the quantity demand of a commodity get affected so that is what a concept of elasticity of demand so we'll move on to the first slide you see here in the first slide uh, I was trying to explain you what is the meaning of the elasticity and it is told here that elasticity is a degree of responsiveness. Res responsiveness in economics does not mean that whether a uh, consumer is happy or uh, happy or sad because when the price of the commodity increases generally we uh, see the consumer become very sad and when the price fall we become very happy that is not a, a topic of economics. In economics we do not see whether a consumer is happy or sad. What we are interested here in this chapter by the word responsiveness means when the price increase how much of less commodity I am going to buy and when the price uh, lowers uh, or fall how much of more commodity I am going to buy so my responsiveness will be uh, seen from the change in the quantity of commodity that I am going to purchase so that is what the meaning of the word responsiveness here implies right so that is what actually a uh, elasticity 
so uh, this is what if you look in the, into the third point then you will find that uh, we say that elasticity is a unit free measurement because it does not have any unit we do not express elasticity in any unit like uh, sometimes we say units like uh, k kg or uh, number of numbers so it is a unit free completely a unit free uh, measurement so this is what okay let us move on to the next slide and find what is there i hope uh, just now we have i told you that uh, demand function and the factors affecting demand this is just a recalling you can see the heading here it is told recalling demand function the first two video i have uh, told you what is demand function so i'm not going much detail into it so let us uh, start with this slide because this is the slide where we are going to understand the basic concept of elasticity of demand you can look here in this uh, flow chart you can find here there are uh, th four types of elasticity of demand that uh, i have discussed here one is called price elasticity of demand it simply means what is the meaning of this price elasticity in in common language if i say or in simple term in simple language if i'm going to say then price elasticity is nothing but it is change in the quantity purchase of a commodity due to the change in the price of the commodity so that means if when the price will change how much change will be there in the uh, commodity that i'm going to purchase so that is what actually a concept of price elasticity of demand similarly if you look into the second uh, uh, that is the second type of elasticity we say it is a income elasticity and income elasticity is nothing but here we are interested to find out that how much quantity of the commodity will change when income of the consumer is going to change not the price because in the first one i told the i want to i am interested to know that how much quantity is changing when price is cha price is changing but here in this case that is in income elasticity i am interested to know how much quantity demand will change when there is a change in income so that makes a difference between price i hope you have understood now what actually price elasticity means and what actually income elasticity means similarly we have here third uh, type of elasticity that is called cross elasticity i hope you remember uh, in the theory of demand we have talked about substitute good and complementary good because they are they are also called related good so the concept of cross elasticity is like this that when the price of uh, related good changes for example say when the price of uh, coffee change what will be the change or how much will be the change in the demand for uh, tea that is what actually the cross elasticity of demand uh, tell us and then finally you can look here this is not in your syllabus but still i'll tell you that advertisement elasticity of demand it is again a type of elasticity where we want to find out that what will be the change in the quantity demand in the market due to the advertisement uh, that we see in the television or uh, print media or something something that is uh, you may you may uh, tell that is non print media so that is what actually the concept of elasticity of demand so let us uh, go through uh, each and every type of elasticity and find out what we can explore here okay so moving on to the next slide you can see here uh, we will talk about price elasticity first and then there are many things that we will first uh, talk on price elasticity then we'll move on to the income and cross elasticity of demand okay let me first read uh, what is there the first point you can see here in the first point it is told that price elasticity of demand may be defined as a degree of responsiveness of quantity demand due to change change in its price as what i just now told that price elasticity is nothing but it is a concept that tell us that what will be the change in the quantity demand when there is a change in the price or sometime we define it a little differently we also sometime define price elasticity of demand uh, you can see here the formula this formula can be told in a, uh, that is uh, we can define the price elasticity from this formula also by saying like this that price elasticity of demand is nothing but it is a percentage change in it is a ratio of percentage change in quantity demand due to percentage change in price so that is also you can uh, use this definition also to define price elasticity of demand okay one example to uh, further understand what is the meaning of the price elasticity of demand you can look here uh, the, this example is given where it is told that if the price of milk and wheat both rises by 15% consequently their demand fall by 30% and 5% respectively okay this is something where uh, we will move on to the further topic where we will understand uh, more about price elasticity you can look here according to this example if i explain you then this example tell us that when there is a change in the uh, price of milk as well as wheat by 15% it uh, it may uh, means actually we it may that uh, 15 percent increase or 15 percent decrease for both commodity actually there is a change in 15 percent so what 
uh, responsiveness we see uh, here the responsiveness that we see in the market is something like this that due to the 15 percent change in the price of both the commodity there is a 30 percent change and uh, 30 percent change in that quantity demand of milk and five percent change in the quantity demand of wheat so therefore we can simply say from this point that people are responding more when there is a change in the price of milk but when there is a change in price of wheat, people are not responding more and the response is only 5%. Therefore, what, what the point is, in the price elasticity, this responsiveness uh, have different value. When there is a large response that we see from the consumer side, we say it that price elasticity is elastic in nature. And when we see that there is a less response from the consumer side, we say that price elasticity is inelastic or less elastic in uh, nature. You can see here the two word I have mentioned that is more elastic and less elastic. This less elastic is also known as inelastic. So that is what actually uh, the two, uh, two different uh, degrees of elasticity. This is called degree of elasticity. We'll come on to the next slide also. But for time being, let us uh, understand this only. And this is the formula. You can see here the formula of uh, elasticity of demand. By using this formula, we can find out the change in the quantity demand when there will be a change in the price i'll show you some numericals in my next video where you can see that uh, how to find out the uh, how to solve the problems related to uh, elasticity of uh, demand chapter right okay so moving on to the uh, one uh, one more point let us uh, focus here first before we go to the next slide you can see here one keynote i have uh, put here to make you understand actually uh, why we put minus uh, sign here you can see here while calculating the elasticity of price elasticity of demand we put minus sign the implication or the min the importance of this minus sign is that that this minus sign shows inverse relation between price and demand according to law of demand so that is that is the reason that why we put here minus sign just to uh, represent that the price and the demand are inversely related to each other okay so moving on to the next slide you can see here the topic is the method of uh, measurement of price elasticity of demand as i told that there are various methods by which we can measure the price elasticity of demand uh, in your syllabus uh, there are three different methods that is percentage method geometrical method and expenditure method so let me first go through the first method you can look here this is called percentage method where the formula is very simple in order to find out elasticity of demand we use this formula percentage change in quantity demand by percentage change in price and you can look here uh, this is a little bit uh, I have derived so that uh, you can understand that how actually the formula uh, is derived and how we are writing this formula uh, when we are talking about percentage change so change is nothing but actually uh, if I say like this that let, let us think that Q1 is the quantity of the commodity which consumer was demanding uh, in time uh, say T and uh, Q2 is the quantity of the commodity which consumer is demanding in the time T plus 1 so this was the de quantity demand which which I'm making earlier and this is the quantity demand I'm making in the present time so what I want to know that what is the change so definitely how we find out change we find out change by subtracting so this is q2 minus q1 and since we are talking about percentage so we are putting here the value of q1 that is initial I hope you all remember your uh, uh, say, uh, chapter of uh, percentage uh, when you have been taught in mathematics that is percent ch chapter percentage where uh, we used to calc find out the percentage by uh, change by initial into 100 so here also uh, we are doing the same that is change by initial quantity into 100 and uh, the, in the denominator you can see here it is told percentage change in price so therefore again I am using the same uh, logic here that is change by initial into 100 so change by initial price into 100 and uh, this change uh, actually we represent this change that is minus or change is represented in a derivative that is in class uh, 11 and 12 mathematics by a symbol called delta so this delta q is nothing but delta q means q2 minus q1 that is change and delta p is also nothing but it is change in the price so delta q by delta p and this 100 and this 100 will cancel out uh, from the 
because in the numerator 100 is there and denominator also 100 is there so this 100 is going to cancel out and the p1 p will go up so this p1 i am representing all by a letter p and q1 i am representing by letter q so p1 is a initial price and q q1 uh, and this q is a initial quantity so my formula for the elasticity of demand becomes minus delta q by delta p into p by q so this is what actually the formula of elasticity that we are going to use to solve the numericals on this chapter okay so this is what actually a percentage method let us go for the second method you can see here the second method is called expenditure method and uh, in this method generally the numericals does not come from this uh, method but uh, there are some basic questions that uh, come from this method so afterward we'll have a discussion when we will have a discussion on the questions we can better understand that what type of question comes from uh, this method so but let us uh, go through what is this method and how we uh, find out the value of elasticity using this method you can see here i have made one table and in this table you are going to find that uh, price this is here it is written price rise and price fall and if you look here then it is called there are three different value of elasticity i have taken one is elasticity when the value of elasticity is one when the value of elasticity is uh, greater than one and the value of elasticity is less than one so uh, uh, we will have a discussion on what uh, what is actually elasticity one means what is greater than one means and what is less than one means but for timing we will just understand this table to uh, see okay just have a look so actually the logic is like this you have to for timing you have to remember this table so as to uh, give the give the an, uh, answer in your uh, answer in your examination you can look here it is told that when the price is going to rise when there is a rise in the price and we find that the expenditure made by the consumer remain constant right and you can see here the formula of the expenditure is also written it is nothing but it is price into quantity so what i'm talking i'm telling that if the price of any commodity rises generally what we expect or generally what we uh, think we think that when the price will rise i have to increase my uh, expenditure to have the same quantity of commodity and that is what actually the general uh, sense tell so if the price of milk is going to say suppose if one packet of milk cost 24 rupees and if the price of milk uh, rises up and every day i buy two packets of milk then the total money that i have to pay when the price is 24 is uh, that is 48 but when the price increases to 25 now i have to bear more expenditure to buy the same quantity of milk so using that logic only i'm telling that when the price is going to rise but there is no change in expenditure that means somewhere or other the um, that is your uh, consumer is reducing the quantity to uh, keep their expenditure constant so if this is a situation then we say the value of elasticity is equal to one this is also called unit elastic similarly when the price fall and expenditure remain constant then also the value of elasticity is equals to one and we say it is a case of unit elastic uh, look at the second situation you will find when the price is rising but and what we find that the total expenditure fall that is what i was talking i was telling that this is a general response that we see uh, from the consumer side that when price rise we uh, the expenditure for expenditure actually rises but here in this situation i'm telling the expenditure fall therefore the cons consumer uh, is responding so in this situation what we see that this is a situation where we see that the elast uh, the value of elasticity is one that means consumer is responding similarly when the price is for uh, price is falling uh, the expenditure is rising that is again elasticity of value we say it is elastic and uh, here in this case uh, just the opposite when the price rise and expenditure also rises that is a case of inelastic that we do not have any uh, scope to response we have to buy the commodity that means the commodity is an essential commodity for us and when the price fall our expenditure also falls so that is a case of inelastic so for timing i'll suggest that you can go through this table to uh, or you can memorize this table to remember that uh, what is the value of elasticity when the price rise and what happened to the expenditure okay so this is the expenditure method where we will uh, uh, we have a different value of elasticity let me go through the one more method where we will understand how to find out the price elasticity of demand you can look here uh, this method is called point method or geometrical method again we generally uh, do not see any numerical coming from this method but this method is important uh, theory wise because in theory the question may comes that what is the value of elasticity there are many questions we'll have a, have the discussion on the questions in my uh, next video but uh, 
for timing let us first and focus here and understand what is point method or geometrical method you can see here uh, there are two uh, diagrams that I have drawn actually to make you understand what is a point method or geometrical method of finding elasticity uh, this curve that is the curve a b you can see I'm uh, placing the pointer here the curve a b is nothing but it is a demand curve so in the horizontal axis i am measuring quantity and in the vertical axis i am measuring price and this is my demand curve which is a downward sloping and you can look here i have taken a point c i have taken a point c on the demand curve such that point c is the middle of this line a b so therefore i can say that from c to b this part is equal to c to a because c is the middlemost point and this part that is the c b is nothing but what we have given it a name lower segment whereas this a c is uh, we have given a name upper segment using this logic we can say uh, there is a formula of finding elasticity what we say that elasticity of price elasticity of demand can be calculated by a formula called lower segment by upper segment so the so suppose in case you know what is the magnitude of cb suppose if uh, cb is 4 and uh, ac is also 4 because c is the middle point so this is 4 so this sh uh, this uh, should also be 4 so if i use the value of lower segment that is 4 and upper segment also 4 here so 4 by 1 uh, 4 that that will come one so the here we are getting in this case at point c we are getting the value of elasticity equals to one so this is what actually uh, point method or geometrical method but you can look here uh, second diagram if you look here in the second diagram then you are going to find uh, more about uh, this diagram uh, just see here also the same concept is being used quantity is taken in the horizontal axis and price is taken in the vertical axis and mn is the demand curve where p is the point in the middle of mn so if p is the middle of mn then pn the magnitude of pn and the magnitude that is the length of pm is same so if i want to find out the value of elasticity at point p then i have to use this formula and according to this formula my lower segment is pn so pn by uh, pm and of course pn and pm pn and pm is same so therefore the value of elasticity is equals to 1 but the point is if i want to find out the value of elasticity at point b you can look here on the screen at point B if I want to find out the value of elasticity then I will use the formula lower segment by upper segment and you can see lower segment is BN and upper segment is BM so this is smaller and this is uh, bigger so lower segment that is uh, numerator is a small and denominator is bigger so what we uh, what we can say that if numerator is a smaller and denominator is bigger then definitely the entire calculation will be a fraction that is less than one and that is the reason that why we say that elasticity is less than one in uh, at point b and of course at point a the lower segment is a n that is numerator is bigger and the upper segment is a m which is a smaller one so what we see if we apply this formula we are going to find that uh, a lower segment is uh, that is numerator is big and upper uh, denominator is small so therefore the entire calculation will be a whole number so we say that the elasticity is greater than one that is also called elastic so this is what actually the geometrical method or the point method of finding price elasticity of demand i hope you have uh, uh, understood the three methods so let us quickly see what are the uh, things we have seen so far and then uh, we'll continue further so i told you in this first slide what is who uh, who has given the concept of elasticity and what was the purpose of giving the concept of elasticity right and then i told you what is the general meaning of the word elasticity in economics elasticity means responsiveness and responsiveness uh, of a consumer is not shown by he whether he is angry or sad but it is rather shown in economics by the change in its quantity purchase so after this i told you uh, a little bit of a, a small recall recalling on the demand function then different types of price uh, different types of elasticity the we have discussed price price elasticity so far and the methods of finding price elasticity income and cross elasticity still we are left uh, i hope uh, we, if the time permit will continue or we'll see uh, the two concept in uh, the next uh, next video okay price elasticity i told what is the meaning of the price elasticity definition of price elasticity and the formula that we use to find out the price elasticity this is the percentage method there are three methods i told percentage method is like this where we find out the price elasticity 
uh, expenditure method I told you have to remember this table in order to give the answer related to expenditure method and finally we are we have uh, we are coming to the third method that is called point method or the geometrical method of finding price elasticity of demand where we use the formula lower segment by upper segment so this is what actually uh, the three different method of finding price elasticity of demand let's see what is there in the next uh, slide you can see here in the next slide the topic is like this degree of price elasticity some of you may be confused what are these uh, new terms I am using but the con uh, things are very easy uh, the degree here implies nothing but degree here implies different spatial value of elasticity of demand so you can uh, so think like this that when you uh, find the when you solve the numerical problem when you solve any any numerical problem you get different values like it may be the answer may be 26 or the answer may be 1 0 minus or something like this similarly in case of elasticity also when we calculate the value of elasticity or when we solve the problem of elasticity we get different values value may be positive value negative value uh, it may be a zero it may be one it may be anything so the different value of elasticity is actually uh, given a name called degree of price so degree here implies the value of price elasticity you can see this step uh, see this flow chart here again so you can look here the price elasticity of demand have different value where we have some uh, values have been given name uh, that is called perfectly inelastic relatively elastic relatively inelastic unitary elastic and perfectly elastic so don't worry about it children uh, we'll go through this uh, we will try to understand what is actually uh, these uh, what is these names are and uh, what does these names actually mean so let us begin with this and uh, see here uh, as you have seen in the previous slide here i have taken the first value of price elasticity and that is called perfectly inelastic you can see i can show you the first slide so that you can understand what i'm talking about perfectly inelastic can you see this so this is what perfectly inelastic so let us first talk on perfectly inelastic so perfectly inelastic it means nothing but if i define it it means that when quantity demand of a commodity does not changes with change in the price of the commodity if this is a situation in the economy that means even if the price is changing whatever be the price of the commodity the demand for that commodity is not changing if that is a condition then we say that that is a situation of perfectly inelastic that means we are unable to respond the consumer cannot respond even if there is a change in the price of the commodity and this is generally this situation generally happen in case of uh, necessity good in case of ex, um, highly necessary goods for without which we cannot uh, leave our life we cannot uh, sustain our life so that is what but you can see here in your book it is written that uh, this type of situation is normally not found in our real life of course this situation does not found in the real life but there are some situations where uh, this type of conditions may prevail like for example if I give you a condition or example then I hope I can make you understand uh, well what is the meaning of perfectly inelastic demand okay so uh, I'll give you the example let, uh, let me give you suppose for example if any uh, any person uh, or any relative of yours is in hospital and doctor asks to bring one bottle of blood and when you go to the blood bank suddenly what happened the uh, seller asked for uh, a huge price the seller is charging uh, double or triple the price so therefore we cannot say that uh, since the seller is charging a uh, triple uh, price then what actually the price of the uh, price of that uh, bottle of blood is so we cannot uh, deny buying it we cannot say that okay i'll not buy because the price is tripled or double so in that situation we do not have any uh, chance to respond because we know that we have to save the life of the person and therefore uh, whatever the price is we are going to buy that uh, buy that commodity so the, if that type of commodity if we are talking about then that is the uh, that in that situation we say it is a situation of perfectly inelastic inelastic means uh, perfectly inelastic means we have no scope to respond and that is the reason 
that why the value of elasticity of demand in case of perfectly inelastic is zero you can see here i put the values zero means people cannot respond and in this and uh, if i show you then you can see here uh, this is the demand curve so generally you have seen the demand curve is downward sloping but in case of perfectly inelastic we draw the demand curve like this a vertical line this vertical demand curve imply you can look here suppose uh, you, from this diagram you can see that quantity demand is this when the price is this much so if the price is rising say suppose if the price rise to this position I am showing it with the help of a pointer if the price rise to this position still from the demand curve my demand remains same so this vertical demand curve show me that even if the price is changing there is no change in uh, demand so this is a case of perfectly inelastic demand now uh, this I have shown with the help of one uh, table also you can see here that when the price of mango is changing I have taken an arbitrary example I have taken a just an hypothetical example of mango and I am saying that when the price is 50 the demand is 4 when the price increase the demand remains same and when price further increase the demand still remain same so this uh, shows that there is a no change in demand when the price is changing so this is a case of perfectly inelastic demand okay so uh, i hope you have liked this video uh, we'll continue further in my next video where i'll show you so where, where, where we will discuss about different uh, more values like perfectly elastic uh, unitary elastic that is elastic and some uh, very interesting examples about uh, coca-cola you can see some pictures we'll have a discussion on this pictures also that uh, how this picture represent elastic demand and so on so okay uh, thank you